I'm gonna show you some simple and easy fixes that you can do in Blender to make your Vroid avatar that much better when you upload it to VRChat. Everything we're gonna do is gonna be super easy and simple. All you need is an avatar already built in Vroid, and if you haven't made a Vroid avatar yet, check out my previous video in this series. It'll be linked down in the description and here in the corner. So first off, you need to download and install Blender from the website, but what we actually need is a slightly older version of Blender that's compatible with a plugin that we're gonna be using. So as of the making of this video, we need version 2. 2.93 of Blender. So to install that, we'll go to download right here where it says previous versions and then all previous versions right here. And like I said, the CATS plugin supports up to 2.93. So we'll click on that one. And then 2.93.8 should work. Just pick a, if you're on Windows like me, just the MSI file should work. And then you can install it and open it up. And then you also need to install three plugins from GitHub, all three of which will be linked down below. Uh, one is called the VRM add-on for Blender, which will help you to be able to import VRM files. Then we have the CATS plugin itself, which is like the biggest, most important tool for fixing these avatars for VR chat. And then we have this material combiner add-on for the CATS plugin. For these GitHub pages, if you've never used GitHub before, just look over here on the right where it says releases and then click on the latest release. And then here you can click on the zip file and just download that. Now we're gonna open up Blender. This is what it looks like. You can just hit next right here, whatever, just click out of that, doesn't matter. Go over to the top left where it says edit. And then we're gonna go to preferences. We're gonna go to add-ons, install, and then find those zip files wherever you have them downloaded. Probably in your downloads, uh, you need the actual zip file. Don't extract it before uploading. You just need the zip file. Just select it and then hit install install add-on and then make sure you have it checked here. Make sure all three of the plugins are checked and added here. All right, now that we have everything set up, you can hit A to select everything in the Blender scene and then delete. Just hit your delete key to get rid of everything. And then we can import our avatar by going to the file, import, and then at the very bottom, it should say VRM. If you don't see that, just make sure you installed the plugin correctly. And then just find wherever you exported your VRM file from Vroid. Now that it's imported, you should see a gray shape in the middle here that looks like your avatar. Now, before we go any further, let me show you some basic navigation. So clicking in the mouse wheel, that's how you can turn the scene and move around this way. And then if you scroll in and out with the mouse wheel, that's how you zoom in and out. And then to move the scene around, you have to hit shift and then the mouse wheel, and then you can drag up, down to the side, left, right, whatever. All right, so what you're gonna do is you're gonna select your avatar, make sure it's got that uh, orange highlight all around it, and then go to the very right here where it has this arrow, we're just gonna click on that, and then go down to where it says cats, click on that. And then here we're gonna hit at the very top, fix model. Model. That's gonna make the model look like it's supposed to with all the right textures and everything. And as you can see there, now it looks like what it did in Vroid. Real quick, if you need glasses for VR, then you should check out VR Wave prescription lenses. These lenses are the perfect solution if you need glasses, or even if you don't and you just wanna protect the lenses in your headset from getting scratched or ruined. Let me tell you, as someone who needs glasses, using VR Wave prescription lenses make VR so much easier. Glasses can get scratched and can scratch the headset lenses themselves. Plus they just get in the way and aren't very comfortable. Prescription lenses solve all of these problems. Plus, you can protect your eyes with the addition of a blue light filter that doesn't change the color tone in the headset, making them a superior option if you want to protect your eyes while spending hours in VR. VR Wave will be linked down in the description if you want to check them out, and you can use my coupon code VIRTUALPANDA for 5% off. Okay, so now that we have our model here, it looks normal. There's some really easy fixes we're going to do here in CATS. So first, we're going to go to eye tracking in the CATS plugin area, and then right here where it has blink L and blink R, let's drag this out so it's easier to see. So Let's blink left and right. We're just gonna select from the drop down menu, I close L for the left and then I close R for the right. We're just assigning the shape keys that were made in Vroid here in Blender so it transfers over to VR chat. Once you have that put in, just click create eye tracking. And if it gives you an error or anything like that, just press it again, keep trying. Eventually it'll work, it'll succeed. And then you'll see this right here under the eye tracking tab. It'll say creation, testing and start eye testing. Once you see that, that means it worked. Now let's go to the visemes here. So the visemes are the mouth shapes that your mouth makes when you're talking. So in Vroid, we made three specific shapes and we're gonna assign those here. So for the ah visim or the uh is the sound it is, the A, we're gonna assign mouth A is what I did. And then for the O, we just need the O visim. So we're gonna find O here, mouth O right there. And then for the CH visim, I assign that one to the I, just make sure whatever you did in Vroid, you put it here. Again, go watch my other video if you don't know what I'm talking about. I also experimented with increasing the shape key mix intensity. That's something you can try out if you want more exaggerated mouth movements. But for now, we're just gonna leave it out one. After that, just hit create visemes and it's going to create all the visemes that you need. 
All right, now let's fix some issues with the bones, the armature. So we're gonna select these bones right here, this armature area here. Then we're gonna go to the edit mode by selecting this drop down menu over here and hitting edit. All right, and then the first fix we're gonna do, this is a one that was recommended by Fia, I think more for full body tracking or something like that. You're gonna grab this uh, shoulder bone right here, kind of not really a shoulder bone, but it's too long. So we're gonna grab the ball on the end of it. Then over here on the top left, we're gonna select a move tool. And then we're just gonna drag that to be about half the size as it was. Before we do that though, we're gonna go to the top right here where it has this little butterfly icon and then select the X so that everything we do on one side of the X axis mirrors to the other side. So now that when we drag it, both sides are gonna go in. So yeah, again, just drag that to be about half of what it was before. And if you need to go back, just hit control Z and that'll just undo whatever you just did. But yeah, there we go. That looks good. All right, now we're gonna go down. We're actually gonna grab the foot bone right here. And we're gonna go over to the very right where it has this little bone symbol. And then we're gonna hit relations. And then we're gonna deselect inherit rotation and make sure you do that on both sides. So we're gonna do that on the left side now. Deselect inherit rotation. All right, one thing we also want to do now is we wanna reposition the feet so that they're actually flat on the ground. Wherever these bones are, that's where your avatar is gonna meet the ground. So if you don't want half of your feet below the ground, we need to reposition this. So we're just gonna select one bone and then we're just gonna drag it down and then we need to rotate a bit. So go to the top left, hit that rotate tool and then you just drag like this red curve, turn that, that looks pretty good. And then we're actually gonna bring it back up just a little bit. Cool, and then we're gonna do the same thing with this other bone right here. Rotate it first, just like that. And then we're gonna go back to the move tool to just kind of reposition it like this. That looks pretty good. You can play around with it, do some trial and error to see what works perfect, but you just want it to get right around the bottom of the feet. If you put it too low, you may end up having it where your feet, you end up floating with nothing underneath. Um, so just be careful with that. There we go. Just adjust it a little bit. That looks like that should work. All right. So sometimes your avatar will end up having like a weird pose in VR chat. Um, for example, I didn't like how the legs were sometimes too close together. In fact, in some avatars, it made it look like you had to go to the bathroom. It had like what they call the PP pose where your legs were kind of crossing a little bit. So if you want to reposition how your avatar stands just at natural state, all you need to do is go to the start pose mode and then we're going to make sure we're mirroring on the x-axis and then just select let's say the thigh leg and then make sure you're on the rotate. And we're just going to rotate it out just a little bit. There you go. Just to make sure that our legs are a little bit farther apart from each other. Nothing too crazy. You don't want to be doing like the splits or anything. You can also look at your avatar from the side. If you want to give them a slight bend, you could grab the calf bone and then you could just kind of bend that back if you just want to have it a more natural looking state where it just has a slight bend in the knee instead of being locked straight. So you can kind of mess around with that. Again, this is trial and error. You're going to want to import your avatar into VR chat, see what it looks like, and then come back and make some adjustments as needed. If you don't want to mess with it, don't worry about it. Just bring your avatar into VR chat. And then if it has issues where it has like the PP -pee dance, then you can come back in here and try and fix that by just moving the legs a little bit farther apart. And once you're done with these edits, by the way, in pose mode, make sure you hit apply as rest pose and then that'll save into the avatar. All right, now let's talk about reshaping the avatar. So let's say for some reason I want to make my avatar just a little bit thicker, you know, with two C's. So I'm going to grab the actual avatar model, not the bones anymore. Then over here on the top left, we're going to go to sculpt mode. Okay, and this is where I can actually mess with the shape of the avatar. So if we go over here to um, the grab tool, this one right here, select that. Basically now I can grab the avatar and pull part of it out just like that. Now obviously it'll look stupid we're not going to do that. But if you go over here to the radius, we can make that a little bit bigger. And then say, like I said, we want to make her thick. So we'll grab, uh, make sure we're mirroring on the X axis, grab around the waist and just thicken that avatar out. And of course we want to thicken it out the other way also. Boom, that looks stupid. But if you want to reshape your avatar or whatever, this is how you would do it. You'd be able to make little small adjustments like that. For me, I'm satisfied with how the avatar looks, so I'm not going to mess with this, but I just wanted to show that to you in case there's something you wanted to change that you couldn't do in Vroid. So one other fix I want to do is I want to make it so that this graphic on the t-shirt doesn't bend or move whenever I move my arms. So I'm just going to show you this by going to pose mode. I'm not going to save anything. If I select this arm right here and I bend it up, you see how the hoodie, the graphic right here on the hoodie starts to kind of bend upwards a little bit. And if I go down, the opposite happens. So if I don't want my hoodie to bend right there, we can change that. Um, and I'm just going to stop pose mode. Nothing saved. So if I want to fix that, I'm going to go over here to top left. I'm going to go make sure I have the avatar selected, then go to the top left, go to weight paint. On the right here, we're going to select 
select this triangle, this green triangle. And then on the vertex groups, we're gonna look for the right arm. All right, so I have the right arm selected. So what does this mean? This means that whenever I move the right arm, it's going to be moving these areas that are colored in. So the blue areas, the dark blue are not affected, but as the blue turns to a lighter blue, to a green, to the red, it's more affected by the movement of this muscle. So as you can see right here, the graphics of this shirt are a little bit lighter blue, almost green. So we wanna get rid of that. So we're gonna go over to the right here. We're gonna go to tools where it says blend. We're gonna change that to subtract. We're gonna bring our radius back down. We had it a little bit higher from, from before. And then we're just gonna draw on this to make this the dark blue. This is basically making it so that this area is not gonna be affected anytime I move that bone. We need to do the same thing for the uh, right shoulder. The right shoulder is kind of affecting the top of this graphic. So we're just gonna erase that a little bit and then make sure you do it to the left side also. Now that it's done, if I'm in pose mode again, just to test this out, I can move my arm up and down and it doesn't really affect the graphic at all. It still kind of affects it a little bit right there, but that's not really distracting or unnatural. It looks fine. All right, so now that we've done all those fixes, um, your avatar looks exactly the way you want it. Now we're ready to do some optimization. So to start off with optimization, let's reduce some polygons. If you're optimizing for PC, there's probably not much you're gonna wanna do as far as reducing polygons are concerned. But if you're on Quest, you're absolutely gonna need to do this. To see the polygon count of your avatar, go to the bottom right here, uh, right click this little bar right here and make sure it's checked scene, scene statistics. And then right there where it says faces or triangles, that's how many polygons you have. 33,455. Right here, I'll show you the different requirements for different ratings for PC and Quest avatars. For PC, you need to try to have under 32,000 polygons for the best rating possible. But it's fine if you're a little bit higher. So for example, right now I'm at 33,000. I'm not gonna worry about it if I'm just going for PC. For Quest, you should probably shoot for under 15,000 polygons as the medium rating is the default minimum display performance rank. That basically means if you have more than 15,000, most people are gonna have your avatar hidden by default, whereas if you have under 15,000 polygons, your avatar will show for most people by default. Well, that said, you may want to shoot for even less, like 10,000 or even below that, 7,500, if you want to go to a lot of parties, because some parties will only let you use avatars with good or excellent ratings. So if you're on PC and your avatars is optimized, you want to be, then skip to the next part. But if you need to reduce some of these polygons, let me show you how to do that. So Cats has a built-in decimator right here called the decimation. And decimation is when you just reduce the amount of polygons. So if we just put in here, let's say we're going for 15, thousand polygons and then make sure we're on um, safe decimation because we don't want to lose any shape keys we're going to just hit quick decimation and see what happens so with the smart decimation it only reduced it down by a thousand two thousand polygons the reason we did the safe decimation is because we don't want to lose any of the shape keys or, or make it look bad. If you want to, we could do, let's say, let's do a full decimation just to show you what that looks like. Let's hit quick decimation. Boom. So not only did we lose shape keys, but now our hair is really messed up. That's just not going to work. So we're just going to control Z. So if we want to get lower than 32,000, we're just going to have to do that manually. All right. So to do everything manually, we're going to go to model options right here, and we're going to hit separate by materials. And then if you go over here to the armature, hit that drop down. We now have all of the body is separated by the different materials. So if you wanted to, we could just hide different parts of the body. Let's go ahead and do that. Hide all of these with this little eyeball, except for the very last one. And you know what? We're going to hide the armature also. Okay. So this is just the hoodie part of the avatar. So with this selected, we're going to go over here to the little wrench icon. We're going to add a modifier called the decimate modifier. And then right here, you can reduce this ratio and that's going to automatically start reducing the polygon. So if I go all the way down, there's nothing there anymore. If I go a little bit back up, you see how that makes the hoodie kind of blocky and ugly looking. Um, so we don't want to do that. We want to keep as many polygons as we can while reducing it. So let's go up all the way back up and just go down until you start to notice it look noticeably bad. Right there's pretty bad. So we're going to go back up a little bit, right about 0.3, I think is pretty good. Um, yeah, right around 0.3. So we're just going to leave that. And I think that looks fine. It doesn't look like it messed anything up. And if you want to be sure, then you can add everything back and then just move around make sure that, you know, sometimes when you do this, you'll end up being able to see through the hoodie, for example, and see the skin. So just make sure that's not happening. Just move around the avatar and make sure you're not able to see through the hoodie. Okay, cool. So doing that, we got rid of a couple thousand polygons. So you're going to do that. You're going to go through every 
part of this avatar and reduce some of the polygons. For the shoes, it's okay if you make that one look a little bit worse because no one's gonna be looking at your shoes anyway. That's pretty bad, so we're gonna go a little bit higher. I think that's pretty good right there. Now, the only parts of the avatar that you don't wanna do this on, are probably the hair. You don't wanna go too much on the hair. You can do a little bit with the hair, but not too much. And then the face. Don't even touch the face or the eyes or anything like that because as soon as you start decimating, you're gonna get rid of the shape keys, which means no more facial expressions. So everywhere else is fine, the body, the clothes, a little bit of the hair, but the face, just don't even touch it. All right, so going through on the avatar, I was able to get it down to a total of like 20,000 polygons. Anytime I did anything on the hair, it started making it look really weird where stuff was sticking out. So I didn't do too much on the hair. And again, I left the face alone. I was able to get it down to 20,000. If you need to get it down lower than that, there are options for that. So for example, I noticed that it was on the back of the hair. If I messed with that at all, um, like you can see here, that's where it started having those spiky things come out. So I'm gonna leave that pretty much alone. So this is accounting for like, like 9,000 of the polygons. Cause if I hide it, I've noticed that it goes from 21,000 down to 12,000. So one option I could do here is go back into Vroid, make this a lot simpler of a hairstyle or try a different hairstyle instead of that one. Um, but let's say 21,000, that's not terrible for quests. It's not ideal, but it'll work for quests. You'll at least be able to get it onto quest. And for PC, this would have been more than fine. We didn't have to do any of this if we were just going to PC. There are other options for getting rid of polygons if you're still having issues. Look up some tutorials about quest optimization in Blender. You'll be able to find some more tips and tricks on how you can do this. Now that we're done getting rid of some of the polygons, what we need to do is combine all the different parts of the avatar back together. So uh, before we separated by materials, now we just need to join meshes all. If you're gonna be on quest, you can't have dynamic bones. Dynamic bones is what makes the hair bounce and other things like that. So if you're gonna be on quest, we gotta delete those dynamic bones. So on this avatar, we have some dynamic bones uh, on the hoodie, there's on the actual hood, the hoodie strings, also on the chest area, and then in the hair, of course, we have lots of dynamic bones. So to delete these, you're gonna select the bones, go to edit mode, and then here on the cats plugin under model options, you're gonna hit merge weights to parents. You don't wanna just delete these because then you'll lose all the weight data. You wanna select each of these and hit merge weights to parents. And then if you wanna do this faster, what you can do is you can hold shift and then select each of these and that'll select all of them together. So selecting all of these bones on the front of the hair, selecting the hoodie strings, chest, and then with all of that selected, we're gonna hit merge to parents and boom. So you should be left with just a very basic skeleton structure, just your arms, uh, your spine, your legs, and then into the head you have like, these are your eyes and this is your neck. And that's it. Everything else, all the dynamic bones are now gone. Again, if you're doing PC, you don't have to delete the dynamic bones. This is only if you're gonna be a quest avatar. All right, so the last optimization thing that we need to do is we need to atlas the materials. So essentially, if you go down here to the optimization and you hit uh, generate material list, uh, you're going to get this list here of all the different materials that your avatar has. Now, anytime your avatar loads in in a world or for somebody, the computer has to make a request for all of these different materials and having more materials means there's more requests, which means it's more time and it's less optimized. So ideally, we want to combine all of these materials into one single material so that the computer only has to make one request for one material. And that's what this little tool here is gonna do for us. So you can just select all of the different parts of the avatar, all the different materials, and then you're gonna hit save Atlas 2. You can save it wherever you want. And then now we have one single material here. Now, if your avatar looks weird, don't worry. That's not how your avatar is gonna look in VR chat. It's just how it looks in Blender whenever you do this for some reason. Now, if you're on Quest, you absolutely need to do what we just did. You need only one material. You can only have one for Quest. Actually, I think you can have a second one, but for you know a good rating, you can only have one. But for PC, we can have up to four and still have a good rating. So what you might want to do if you're a PC avatar is instead of combining all of these together, you may want to keep some of your clothes, like the hoodie, separate. And the reason for that is, let's say you want to have different hoodies that you can switch on and off between. It's gonna be a lot easier to do that in Unity if you have the hoodie texture as its own separate texture as opposed to combined with every other texture. So ideally for PC, maybe what you want to do is have two materials, one for all of your clothes clothing and one for everything else. That way your clothing stays a little bit higher quality than it would if you kept it all together with everything else, but you're also still optimizing everything and only having two materials. Again, you can have up to four, but the less you have, the more optimized it'll be. So to do that, just select everything but the clothes and then combine that together by hitting Save Atlas and then select all the clothes and combine that together and Save Atlas. For now, I'm just gonna combine all these together because this one is going to Quest. All right, once you've reduced polygons and deleted the bones,
icons for quest avatars. And once you combine the textures for both quest and PC avatars, your avatar is now optimized and ready to export. So to export, we're just gonna go over here to the top of the cats plugin. We're gonna hit export model right there. Make sure under path mode, it selects copy. That's just gonna make it easier with the textures and stuff later. I don't know. I just know it's easier. This was a tip from Fia and it was a huge help. And then just make sure that this is selected and blue also. And then just decide where you want to export it and then export FBX. And that's it. In the next video, we'll import the avatar into Unity. And from there, we can edit the dynamic bones, add some emotes and dances, give it some custom outfits and props, and then upload it to VRChat. That video will be out about a week after this one and you can click on it here.